Hi folks, welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. Does that little episode you just watched remind you of one of your camping experiences? Well, you know what? It doesn't have to be that way. In fact, camping is very, very simple. And what I'm doing here today is the most simplest form of camping, and that's car camping. What is car camping? Well, that just means loading up your car and with all of your camping gear and going out to a place like I'm here today at a state park for a one or two night stay. We're going to give you some great information, some basic information on how to go car camping on today's show. Outdoor Oklahoma. Since 1976, bringing you the best Oklahoma has to offer in fishing, hunting, and opportunities to view Oklahoma's beautiful outdoors. Funded entirely by sportsmen and women like you, Outdoor Oklahoma is brought to you by the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation. In the year 2001, celebrate with us 25 years of outdoor excellence on Outdoor Oklahoma. Well, folks, as you can see, I've got all my gear loaded up in my car here, and I'm about ready to set up my camp. We're going to be talking about equipment a little bit later. Well, you know, if camping is intimidating for you, maybe you didn't get an introduction to camping through scout programs or something else, uh, how do you get this information? Well, one of the best resources that I've found is the Boy Scout Handbook. This book is chock full of camping information, and it even has a guide to help you plan your first camping trip. It's called the five W's of camping, and the first W is where to go camping. You know, here in Oklahoma, we got great places to go camping, and here's some more information. Oklahoma is blessed with an abundance of extraordinary public camping opportunities. More than 50 state and U.S. parks provide campsites. So from Black Mesa to Beaver's Bend, we guarantee you there's a spot nearby for you and your family. For a listing of parks and phone numbers, check out the back of a current official state map or log on to TravelOK.com for a wealth of information for your next weekend getaway. Well, let's go ahead and pretend for a moment that you've uh, selected a place to go camping. Well, what do you do when you get there? How do you select a good campsite? Well, one of the things that uh, made me select this campsite above other uh, attributes was this firing that you see here. 
If I'm going to go to a specific campground, what I want to do is concentrate my impact to those areas that are already highly impacted. Rather than me going and building a new fire ring, somebody has come along before us and uh, made this fire ring, and I'm just going to go ahead and use it. You know, some of the other things that made me select this campsite and what makes for a good campsite, you always want an area that's well drained. You never want to camp in a low area that's subject to flooding. And also, this area's got a beautiful view of the lake. Uh, it also affords some wind protection by some of the trees around here. When it really comes down to it, just pick the campsite that you most feel comfortable. You know, where you go camping, where you set up your campsite is certainly important, but another very important thing to preparing for a camping trip is when you're going camping. Uh, I happen to be out here during the fall. It's probably going to get a little bit chilly tonight. I've got my warm uh, fiber filled sleeping bag here. And one other thing that I add to that is a sleeping bag liner. This one happens to be made out of polypropylene, but you can use a wool blanket or a, a polypropylene bed cover to just do about the same thing. You know, the time of year that you go camping is going to dictate to a large degree what kind of equipment you need. But there's some basic equipment that you need for any month of the year that you might go camping here in Oklahoma. Let's take a look at that at one of our local sporting goods stores. Hi everybody, I'm in here with uh, Ned Weathers from Academy Sports up here in Edmond. Ned, thanks for helping us out. You're welcome, Rich. We're going to be talking about some basic camping equipment. And Ned, I think for any person who's a beginning camper, probably first foremost on their minds is, well, what kind of tent do I get? Well, Rich, uh, generally anybody going camping is going to have two different types of activities. Uh, some of you might be going backpacking, where they might right. want something like this. This is a lighter weight tent. Uh, it's got a lower ceiling. It's made to be a little bit smaller, but yet still accommodate, you know, say up to sure. four sleepers. And something like this would run about $59.99. Okay. Okay. And you have something like this, or you can range all the way up to like a family camping tent where you want to just drive up to a campsite, throw right. it out of the car and set up. And this is a lot larger tent, has partitions in it. Right. You know, can accommodate a lot of activities inside the tent. Like uh, you could fit. And this one's actually got partitions kind of like rooms. Exactly. And this would be something that you could fit a cot in, a large air mattress. Right. You know, and really accommodate a lot of comfort. And how much is this one? This one's $129.99. Okay. Okay. Uh, some other accessories that uh, should probably go along with every tent sale. Uh, seam sealer is one. Oh, okay. A little bottle like this will cost you three dollars. Uh, you rub it on all the seams. Right. On Keeps it from leaking in case it rains. Exactly. Okay. And then uh, another good purchase would be a ground cloth or a floor saver. Okay. Uh, like this one. Something Put like that this. on the ground kind of saves wear and tear on the bottom of your tent. Exactly. Yes. About eight bucks, and it'll save you a whole lot of money great, in the long great. run. Great. Well, good information. Let's go take a look at some other stuff. Okay. Let's take a look at. It. Oh yes, a sleeping bag. If you got a tent, you need something to sleep in, right? That's right, Rich. Uh, and then sleeping bags are suited for a lot of different activities. Right. You have uh, something like a mummy bag, which would be more for your serious backpacker who needs something that's lightweight and keeps them really warm. Right. Uh, or a regular rectangular bag, which would be more suited to family camping. Okay. Things that affect your price in sleeping bags would be the weight of the insulation, what type of insulation it is, <clears throat> and how big the bag itself is. I so. See. Uh, sleeping bag can be a pretty personal decision. You know, probably ought to come in and take a look at some. Range of price of what? Anywhere from twelve dollars all the way up to one hundred nineteen. Oh, okay, great. I guess generally speaking, the warmer the bag is, the little the more, higher in price. The more expensive it'll be. Right. Well, folks, we're running out of time, but one other thing that you might want to consider uh, for your basic camping equipment, if you go out and and uh, have any kind of meals at your camp, you're going to have to have something to serve those meals on or prepare them in. And this is a little cook kit. And Ned, what would this, uh, something like this run? Something like this run about $15. Okay, okay. Of course, uh, you also can have a little knife, fork, and spoon set. That's another accessory that you can add to these. And these are what? About a buck fifty. And, uh, you know, we can get as technical on cookware as a camper would like right, to get. Right, right. Well, folks, uh, good information. Ned, I want to want to thank you for helping us out with this. But as you can see, folks, Around three to four hundred dollars can get you outfitted with your basic equipment. That would be sleeping bags and a four-person family tent, and uh, will provide you years of enjoyment. That's right.
we'd like to thank Academy Sports up in Edmond for helping us out with that uh, last segment. And, you know, one of the great things about camping is that it's not very expensive. If you're a family of four, for example, you can get equipped with the basic camping equipment for about the same price as staying in a motel for five or six nights. And, you know, if you take care of that equipment, it's going to last you a lifetime. Well, as you get into camping and uh, want to do it more often, as most people do, you'll no doubt want to add to your collection of that uh, basic equipment with a few accessory items. And I'm going to show you some of the items that I take along on my car camping trips right after this. Looking back to yesteryear, we find some hardcore anglers enjoying some fast tail race striper action below Hugo. Well, Larry, looks like the action is pretty good. There's another nice, this is about the average size here? Yeah, that, that one's a little below average. He's about, I, right there, I just told him, you ought to throw that in back, it's just a baby. <laughs> but it, was, it, was a, it was a keeper size, They'll, those two pounders will make a pretty good fillet. See a few people trying to catch him a little live bait there. Yeah, he's going to use some shad for bait. They work real good, too. Now, this fast water, uh, I, a lot of people have fished it, but a lot of people haven't. If you're going to give any recommendations on, on how to fish real fast-moving big water, what would it be? The way we do is throw out in the turbulent water and let the current carry it around downstream and kind of make an arc out in front of us. And then when we get to the lower end of our arc, we reel it back real slow. And usually during sometime during the, the circle out there if the stripers are feeding one of them will find your jig mm -hmm. that's about an average size fish about a three pound or three and a half looks like uh, you're putting it on him there a little bit I think he's gonna get a little revenge here yeah I've been I've been rubbing him pretty pretty hard about that time and there he is he reared back on one looks like it's a big one the way he's been in that pole a neat thing about it too, those stripers, I think everyone that's ever caught one uh, knows that they fight extremely hard, but in that fast water, uh, do you have to have a little heavier line? They've got to put up a heck of a fight there. They'll, if you don't have a pretty good rig, they'll try to take it away from you. I, I'd like to use about a 17-pound test line. It's heavy enough to, to hold about anything you're going to catch yeah, there. Yeah. You could have lost it for him there. It looked like you were the appointed yeah. netter, but that wouldn't have been too wise. Huh? Yeah, I would I'd have had a hard time living with him if I'd let that get away. Yeah. Do they hit it? Do you bring it back? Beaver's Bend State Park is uh, roughly oh, a little less than 3,500 acres, and it's located in the southern foothills of the Kaimishi Mountains. The trout are stocked twice a month or every other week and the fishing is excellent year round. The reason that it's so good is because the water coming out of Broken Bow Lake is ice cold coming off the bottom of the lake. It's very deep and uh, trout stay in good shape year round. The fishing just as good in the summertime as it is in the winter, if not better. Up in the lake, Broken Bow Lake, we have probably, I think, the best fishing around. We have all three species of bass. The state record largemouth was caught out of Broken Bow last year weighed uh, 14 pounds and 11 ounces. We have uh, spotted bass, they're so plentiful that the limit on them is 15 bass along with six largemouth and smallmouth. Uh, the smallmouth fishing has really gotten good in the last few years. Uh, the lake strain of smallmouth was introduced a few years ago and it's really taken hold. It's not uncommon now for people to catch five pounds and up on the smallmouth, you can catch you a trophy smallmouth there. And I think probably within the next two or three years, it's really going to get good. I think it'll probably be one of the best places in the country on smallmouth. As far as uh, other activities, there's uh, five different trails in the park that you can walk depending on whatever degree of difficulty you're interested in. We have the David Bourne hiking trail that's 24 miles long, 12 miles of it is in the park. It, most of it's pretty rugged terrain. If you don't want to be hardly that much of a hiker, well, there's four other trails that you can take. And if you just you know, want a nice little walk in the woods, we, there's some like that, uh, or just whatever degree you want. So if you're ever in 
the southeastern corner of Oklahoma, I think Beaver's Bend is a place that you'll be glad you visited. <laughs> Folks, uh, you know, you, there's all kinds of a camping equipment out there that you can purchase. Uh, you can spend as much money on camping equipment as you want to, but some of the essentials uh, or accessories, I should say, that I like to take in addition to those essential uh, items, uh, something that's really handy for a car camping situation is a, a propane setup. And this uh, puts out a little bit more light than an electric lantern. Electric lanterns are great for their purpose and especially because you can take them inside of a tent but if you're wanting to light a large area they don't put out as much light as some of the the fuel based uh, lanterns but this setup that I have here with this propane tank it works off of a bulk tank uh, as you can see here and uh, has a post on it and it also has places on here to uh, hook up other propane accessory items like this, uh, this uh, uh, burner here that I use to uh, heat up my uh, dinner and so forth like that. Another thing that I really like to take on my camping trips is a Dutch oven. And there's so many things that you can cook with a Dutch oven. Just about any dish that you can think of you can be cooked in a Dutch oven. This one here uh, happens to be aluminum. They also most often come in cast iron, but you can get them made out of aluminum. They're not quite as heavy as the, as the cast iron ovens, but there's all kinds of recipes that you can get to use in a Dutch oven. Some of the other items that I like to take, there's all kinds of flashlights that you, that you uh, can take on camping trips, and you certainly want to take some sort of flashlight. But one of the, my favorites is a headlamp. And this uh, just fits on your head uh, like such. And uh, this is a great thing, prevents you, uh, allows you hands-free uh, operation for this headlamp. And uh, it's a great thing to take inside your tent uh, in case you need to find something in the middle of the night. One last thing that I really take, uh, a camping trip can be miserable if you don't get any uh, good night's sleep and there's all kinds of cots available uh, that you can purchase. But one of the things that uh, I really like to sleep on is this uh, air mattress. And this is a self-inflating air mattress. All you gotta do is, uh, is uh, undo this little valve here and uh, it fills itself up with air, believe it or not, which uh, saves you huffing and puffing. But, Hopefully, folks, that's some good information on uh, some of the accessory items that you can take with you car camping. Uh, they're not essential, but they can make your stay a little bit more comfortable. Next, we're going to look at how you go camping, which is probably the most important aspect of any kind of camping. <music> Folks, we have a lot of ethical responsibilities as campers, both to the environment and to other campers that may be uh, sharing the same campsite. One of the things that all campers need to be aware of if they have a campfire is to take some water along. I usually take this five gallon jug, which is uh, usually plenty to go ahead and put out my campfire as I'm breaking camp. You wanna make sure and pour water on the coals and take a shovel as I have here or a stick or something and make sure and stir those coals around thoroughly and make sure your fire is completely out before you break camp. Another thing that I use when, when that I do when I break camp is I go around the area and I pick up all the litter, whether it's mine or not, and that makes it so much nicer for the next person who may come along. I usually take a trash bag with me. Adopt that motto, pack it in and pack it out. Remember what you learned in Hunter Education? This father isn't taking chances with safety. He's making sure his children know how to hunt safely, knowing when it's safe to shoot, avoiding areas where people live. You have to stay alert, know where everyone is at all times. Because hunting safety isn't inherited, you have to teach it. For more information on Hunter Education in Oklahoma, call 405-521-3856. Hey kids, listen up. Are you already thinking about what you're going to do this summer? If you like hunting, then we've got a youth camp for you to check out. It's Quail Unlimited's Covey Kids Camp, June 3rd through the 8th at Camp Redlands near Stillwater. 
The name says it all because Covey stands for Conserving Outdoor Values by Educating Youth. It's open to kids 13 to 16 years old. During the week, you'll learn about a wide array of outdoor activities, everything from archery to sporting clays, taxidermy, hunting safety, and even dog training. The cost of the camp is $250, but each year nearly all the participants are sponsored by their local Quail Unlimited chapter. The deadline to apply is May 15th. Contact Bob Hayes at 918-542-1403 for more information. It's a great way to have a memorable summer enjoying and learning about the outdoors. At last week's monthly Wildlife Commission meeting, several proposed new hunting regulations were adopted and slated for next year's hunting season. At the top of the list is a slew of new deer hunting opportunities designed to encourage antlerless harvest. Doe days have been extended across most of the state, and the number of management zones has doubled to more accurately manage antlerless deer. Archery season has been extended two weeks into January for antlerless deer only and a unique new antlerless deer gun bonus season was created to run in late December. Another change coming this fall will be a uniform pheasant season. No longer will there be a separate panhandle season. The boundaries have been slightly expanded and the bag limit will be two cocks per day for the entire open region. Finally, the commission adopted a significant liberalization of the more restrictive southeast turkey season to take place next spring. The season is slated to open with the rest of the state on April 6th and then close April 28th. Hunters will also be allowed two toms in most of the eight county region. The 2001-2002 Oklahoma hunting guide and regulations will be available midsummer and contain all the details. Warmer weather, along with periodic rains across the state, have begun to kick our annual sand bass runs into full swing. Sand bass runs are when white bass migrate or run out of lakes and reservoirs up into streams and tributaries to spawn. The fish feed aggressively and the action can be fast. Most of the traditional hot spots have plenty of good public access right from the bank. Statewide, there's no size minimum or daily limit on white bass. However, be aware that some lakes and tributaries have special restrictions. Play it safe by simply checking the 2001 Fishing Guide and Regulations. Our reports indicate that crappie fishing is about as hot as it gets right now. Suffice it to say, if there's a lake near you, there's probably hungry crappie just itching for a tasty minnow or jig. Try concentrating your efforts in fairly shallow waters, less than 8 feet and especially where you can find brush piles. With almost perfect weather, it's a great time to enjoy our beautiful lakes and reservoirs. So why not take a friend with you and make a day of it? Hey, looking for a quality place to hunt this next year? Away from the crowds and on land that's specifically managed for wildlife? Well, why not apply for a hunt through the department's Controlled Hunts program? Pick up an application booklet at any department installation or wherever you buy your hunting and fishing licenses. Or even better yet, save yourself a stamp and apply quickly, 24 hours a day, online at wildlifedepartment.com. To date, thousands of hopeful hunters have already applied this way. Either way you apply, the deadline is May 4th. Good luck. Well, folks, I'm getting close here. It's too bad we're about out of time for today's show because I've got some good vittles coming up. And the old saying is true, everything tastes better when it's cooked outside. Hopefully you got some good information on today's show about how you can get started car camping. And, uh, you know, don't be just a visitor to Outdoor Oklahoma. Become part of Outdoor Oklahoma. And the best way you can do that is by going camping. I want to thank you all for watching. Join us here each and every week on Outdoor Oklahoma.